Uh, dear audience, organizing committee, thank you for inviting me here to give a speed talk on how more lies may affect sea trout fitness. I will start talking about uh, uh, the individual uh, life history traits, and then my colleague Richard Hedger will continue afterwards and talk about the potential effects on population dynamics. Uh, some months ago, more than the status of more than 1,000 Norwegian sea trout populations were evaluated. Sea lice were considered the largest threat. More than uh, or approximately 47% of the total negative effects comes from lice, and close to 40% of the sea trout populations are in bad condition or lost. <coughs> Bengt has uh, been talking about some of the differences between the life history of, of sea trout and Atlantic salmon. And for uh, this talk, the main point is that sea trout spend their whole marine feeding period in coastal waters and are therefore more susceptible to lice infestation than Atlantic salmon. Uh, previous research has emphasized uh, lice induced mortality, the immediate mortality when they are at sea. Uh, however, as Bengt also discussed, there are a range of uh, alternative habitat response or, or behavioral responses, uh, such as premature returns to freshwater, to the river, delousing trips, and use of alternative marine feeding areas with poorer growth opportunities. So, sea trout is not necessarily dying from it, but it has some consequences on the subsequent uh, life history. Uh, so the direct effects of more lice at sea, increased mortality, reduced time and growth at sea, which is what is planned to be included in the traffic light system, and the consequences for the trout, reduced size and condition at return to freshwater. Secondary effects of this reduced size and condition on the uh, life history traits, age of maturation, a smaller returner may delay maturation for a year or two, with the consequences that has on the, the spawning population. Fecundity, smaller spawners deposit fewer eggs. We have uh, that uh, a poor condition at return to freshwater will also increase winter mortality. And the anadromy residency trade-off may also be affected by reduced growth and survival at sea. And there's more. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, for all of these secondary effects, we have uh, little or, or, or no good empirical data. But we have some, and we, we are trying to collect more. So, due to a short time here, I will focus on the effects on the age of maturation. Uh, the data we, I will use are from the river hulls up in northern Norway, where we have had a um, fish trap that has been tagging and registering all passages, migrating down and up again into the water course. So I have a 25 year of uh, data, more than 15,000 trout has been uh, tagged. The uppermost uh, plot here, the histogram, that's the uh, size distribution, the mass dis uh, distribution of masses for returners to the freshwater system. And the lower panel, which is the most interesting here, gives you the probability of maturation as a function of uh, the mass at return. So we see that for each age class, the gradient, the, the increase in this relationship is fairly steep. So a reduction in, in mass at return, or that is uh, uh, growth during the last sea trip, can have a dramatic effect on the probability of maturation. So 30% reduction in growth, for example, can lead you fairly long down along this uh, slope. 
And the, the individual consequences for the seed drought will be a much lower expected lifetime fecundity due to the delayed, possible delayed maturation and reduced fecundity, and also an expected lower lifetime. That was on time. Thank <laughs> you.